But first, let's start with Penny Wong's refusal to visit the sites of the Hamas massacre during her trip to Israel. We'd like to feel proud of our country on the international stage, but as we sit here tonight, we can only be ashamed of our foreign minister. We all called on Albanese to visit Israel in the wake of the terror attacks on October 7, and Penny Wong should have flown to Israel, like most other Western world leaders and foreign ministers, right after the attacks in a show of solidarity. But she didn't do that. God forbid this government should actually show some support for Israel in its darkest hour. Instead, she's only now travelling to Israel more than three months after October 7. And there can be no mistaking this trip as one of support because Wong refuses to even visit the sites of the Hamas massacre. She won't step foot in the kibbutzes where frightened families were slaughtered in cold blood, where young women were raped and babies were killed or kidnapped. Penny Wong couldn't articulate a reason today when she was asked why she wasn't visiting. She didn't even bother to try. Minister, why are you going to the uh, site of the October 7 massacre when you're over there? Uh, I will be meeting uh, with survivors of that attack. Uh, as well as families of hostages, uh, and uh, you know, that, that will be important. And that was Penny Wong's only mention of hostages in her press conference before she left for the Middle East today. Not once did she explicitly call for Hamas to return hostages. Not once did she call for Hamas to stop its missiles, its rockets, its war on Israel, its use of civilians as human shields. Instead, it seemed Penny Wong's only criticism today was for Israel. Settler violence uh, in the occupied Palestinian territories uh, must be condemned, uh, and we do so. Uh, well, our position is that we want to see a sustainable ceasefire and that we see an international humanitarian, uh, immediate humanitarian ceasefire as a step towards that. I think there is increasing concern about uh, the protection of civilian lives uh, and we will continue to express uh, those views uh, to all parties. And when speaking about the purpose of her trip, Penny Wong didn't once say it was to express solidarity with Israel because it's obviously not. But instead she said she's going to demand that international law be upheld. I will be focusing uh, on advocating Australia's position, uh, our priority on international humanitarian assistance, our priority on international humanitarian law. Uh, I will be engaging uh, with many parties in the region. It's not hard to read between the lines here. Penny Wong is going to use this trip to lecture Israel yet again on how it should defend itself or not defend itself given she's been calling for a ceasefire. Remember, this is the foreign minister who insensitively tweeted that Israel should show restraint on the very night the terror attacks were still unfolding in the south. I pity the Israeli officials who have to sit through the insufferable meeting where Penny Wong will undoubtedly patronise them with how they should fight Hamas in Gaza. When she couldn't possibly relate to the existential struggle that Israel faces. Well, the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, was also asked today why Wong won't visit the sites of the Hamas massacre, and he basically said in one interview that it wasn't a priority. The priority of her trip, he said, is the delivery of humanitarian aid and upholding international law. Why is the Foreign Minister not going to the homes where some Israelis were murdered on October 7th? Well, she's meeting with the survivors and families of the victims of the October 7 terror attack that occurred. Uh, and this is about uh, prioritising the delivery of humanitarian assistance, uh, upholding of international law, avoiding regional escalation, steps needed to work towards a lasting peace. So Albanese very clear there that the focus of the visit, the priority is not the victims of October 7, but the delivery of aid, 
which is only going to Gaza, not Israel, by the way, and the upholding of international law, which again is a criticism of Israel, even though, as we know, it's Hamas, not Israel, that's failing to uphold humanitarian law. It's curious how the international community and its human rights bodies love to lecture Israel, not Hamas, not the barbarian murderous rapists about humanitarian law. Then in another interview today, also with the ABC, Albanese dismissively scoffed at the question of why Wong wasn't visiting the sites of October 7. Is it correct that Penny Wong won't be visiting the sites of the October 7 attacks? Well, Penny Wong's uh, itinerary is a matter for uh, for her and but, for... But you know where she's going. The, well, uh, I've got to tell you, what I don't do is uh, have a precise itinerary of all of my ministers. Uh, but uh, Penny Wong will be meeting with survivors and families of victims from the October 7 terror attack in Jerusalem. Uh, she'll also be meeting with communities who've been impacted by settler violence in the occupied Palestinian territories. He scoffs at the suggestion that he'd have a precise itinerary of his ministers. Th that's a ridiculous response. Not only was this the worst loss of life in a single day for the Jewish people since the Holocaust, but it was the most traumatic. It's nothing to scoff about. It's inexcusable that Albanese's most senior minister refuses to visit the sites of the massacre or that he hasn't bothered to fly there at all. And as you just heard in that comment from Albanese, he can't say that Wong is meeting with terror victims without mentioning settler violence in the same breath. But uh, Penny Wong will be meeting with survivors and families of victims from the October 7 terror attack in Jerusalem. Uh, she'll also be meeting with communities who've been impacted by settler violence in the occupied Palestinian territories. I'm sorry, but while all violence is abhorrent, it's absolutely not the same. The terror attacks were among the most barbaric we've ever witnessed. Execution rooms, slaughtering, beheading and burning of babies and children, including murdering them in their tiny little beds and cots, going house to house, executing with glee while shouting Alu Akbar while celebrating. You can't compare this to settler violence, which is deplorable and is an issue, and which, by the way, Israel condemns, but it's far from equivalent. Why equate settlers with Hamas? If Penny Wong's agenda was settler violence, she would have gone there a year ago when it was at its peak. With so much denialism on the left about the terror that unfolded on October 7, it is essential that our foreign minister visit the sites of the slaughter of Jews. It's important to witness the enormity of the massacre, to understand why Israel, why, why Jews around the world are still reeling. We all acknowledge that it's important to visit Holocaust museums and concentration camps 70 years on, but just Three months after October 7, Penny Wong turns her back on Jewish suffering. And what is the actual point of her visit? It seems only to lecture Israel. Why should us taxpayers spend a cent paying for Penny Wong to fly to Israel if only to offend the Jewish community? This is all typical of Labor's spineless foreign policy. The Albanese government is playing a dangerous game of cozying up to our enemies, from China to the Iran-funded Hamas, which governs Gaza, even though they're all forming an axis of evil intent on destroying the West. This is flawed foreign policy. It's not smart, it's naive and counterintuitive. But even worse, according to media reports, it's petty politics that's guiding Penny Wong as she insults our closest ally in the Middle East, along with Jewish Australians. The Sydney Morning Herald reports that an adroit political tactician as well as diplomat, Wong will be conscious of the growing local sympathy for the Palestinian cause and the community outrage over the climbing number of civilian deaths. Being seen as too close to Israel, 
risks driving younger and more progressive voters from Labor to the Greens, as well as alienating Muslim and other Arab Australian voters who've reliably voted Labor. But causing offence to her Israeli hosts, the Herald writes, would draw intense blowback from news corporation media outlets and vocal pro-Israel lobby groups here in Australia. Right, so unlike other Labor politicians like Bill Shorten, Daniel Andrews and Julia Gillard, who all recognise the importance of the Jewish state in the wake of the Holocaust, and they all strongly defended Israel, for Penny Wong, who's from Labor's left faction, this is all about votes and stopping younger people supporting the Greens. This is a cold calculation. But Penny Wong doesn't get a tough time in the press gallery about any of this. She's a media sweetheart. The ABC's political journalist Brett Worthington writes that Wong is a darling of the Labor movement with cult-like status among parts of the party. And the Herald calls her Australia's favourite MP. Well, I'm sorry to burst your Canberra bubble, but Penny Wong's trip to Israel is of no international consequence. Israeli officials couldn't give a damn what she has to say, and nor should they. This being the most left-wing anti-Israel government in Australia's recent history. Well, tonight, I'd like to say to Israel, Penny Wong does not represent most Australians. She does not represent us when she criticises Israel and calls for a ceasefire. She does not represent us when she calls for restraint while the terror attacks are still unfolding. She does not represent us when she turns away from the blood-stained walls and floors where so many innocent Jewish families met their graves. She does not stand for us. She is not my foreign minister.